Hey everybody, sorry we had some technical difficulties in today's episode, but we hope you enjoy regardless. Thanks. Hey, welcome back. Hey. <laughs> I just wanted to hit that same note, sorry. <laughs> hey. What up? Welcome. We're going to match the note like you just said. Hey. Hey. Yeah. Sorry. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't even talked about music on this podcast, I just realized. Oh my goodness, we need to. Well, we'll have to do some more music episodes. Okay, yeah. And we'll have to bring a couple of friends on. I know a friend is coming up in yes. less than two weeks that would love to be on the podcast. We're going to have some music talks. It's going to be fun. Yeah, they would think it's the best thing ever. 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 Yeah. What's up? Oh, wait, we're going to change the um, the way this rolls for just today's episode. We're not going to talk about our good versus bad first up. Oh, my God. I was so confused at what you were talking about. I'm like, what are we changing? Yeah. I haven't. I haven't organized <laughs> any of this. <laughs> we're just going to change the way this one rolls. We're not going to do the good versus bad first. We're going to go. Recap. If you watched our last episode, recap, quick recap of the last 10 seconds of our last episode. We talked about hoodwinked. And that there was a free version on YouTube. Plug, yes. plug, plug. Um, just up there. Bootleg, bootleg, bootleg. Bootleg, yeah, bootleg, yeah. bootleg. <laughs> we watched it. Um, so we went and watched that last night. Um, and we have notes. We have notes. Thoughts. We have criticisms of a movie from 2005, so very relevant topic. <laughs> so let's let's talk about it. Yes. Let's so, put out criticisms. Okay. First up, yes. story holds up. Story does hold up. Now I had a theory about the story. So in my head, I was like, oh well, what if there was a like the way I'm gonna put a metric on if this is good mm-hmm. or bad is if there was a live action hoodwinked, would it would the story still hold up? Okay. And then I'm just like, it's it's basically just knives out for kids. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, like, like it, it's it from a really cool like, um, like murder mystery style because as it says, it's like it's got the seeing the same story from all the different perspectives and seeing the changes and then you see like all the tie-ins from all the other perspectives. Yeah. And then you get the final big, big bad at the end. Yeah. You yeah. know, like all the Which, reveals. If, for me, it feels like you get everyone's perspectives and then like when they go back and then the guy i was about to call him a professor the detective from knives out yeah james bond when he goes there and he's like oh, wow, 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 wow. and yeah. then they go through everyone's perspectives of what's happening at each time so like, cool. i was like dude that's literally just hoodwinked for <laughs> the, hey, oh, yeah. it's literally just knives out for kids not hoodwinked for yeah. adults what <laughs> they actually yeah, yeah. speaking of knives out they just announced the third one another one oh great so it's the same kind of thing. First whole two new were cast. So it's same new thing, same thing as the last two. Whole new cast, whole new story, but still Benoit Blanc. Who's that? The main character, the detective. Oh, James Bond. Yes. His name in Knives Out is Benoit Blanc. Benoit Blanc. Yeah. Yeah. So he's the My only name is character Blanc. that stays the same, and it's called <laughs> a Knives Out mystery. Yeah. And then I can't remember what the new name is. If you give me a second, I'll search it up. You talk. Shaken, not stirred. The name's Blanc, Benoit Blanc. <laughs> oh, yeah. also, um, hang on. I'll really quickly say the title of this. Uh, it is called... Oh, no. I very quickly derailed this conversation about hoodwinked with one note of Knives Out. But I like that. I like where we're going with this. This is called podcasting. Apparently, it's called Who's Up? Wake Up Dead Man. But Knives Out, Wake right. Up Dead Man. Oh yeah, yeah. Wake up, dead man. They do know how the how the a knives out mystery coming in twenty twenty five. They do know how being a dead man works, right? You don't really wake up. But that's a very controversial title. Maybe they yes. do wake up a dead man. Um, other big news. Did we already talk about Hunger Games? We did mention it, although we do have to. No, mention it, and then we'll go back to the production well, new, side of the review sorry, for yeah. the main was, topic. <laughs> my, brain, my brain is just went, another new interesting release that is coming out is yeah. the new Hunger Games movie that just got announced. Now, was it movie or book? Both. That's right, both. So, it got announced that they are doing a book on the 25th, no, the 50th Hunger Games, sorry, mm-hmm. the 50th Hunger Games. Which is that's the one is that yeah yeah that kind of so they've announced the book and the movie accompaniment of that book. 
Um, and I have always said, why would they go back to like the songbirds of snakes, the, like the ballad of songbirds and snakes and go back to like Snow Story when you had Hamish right there? Because his one's like very cool. S- Did- so he's this in- insane. Yeah. I don't know if um, – is so, it like a spoiler to bring it out or is um, that's in the books? It's – in the books, it's talked about in the original Hunger okay. Games that this is what has to happen. So the new book is going to be called Sunrise on the Reaping. But right. the really interesting thing about Hamish's games is his is also a quarter quell, which is um, every 25 years they do a special Hunger Games. It's why, spoilers if you haven't read or watched Hunger Games ever, which wouldn't make sense, but... Um, why Katniss and Peter have to go back into the Hunger Games after they've completed their Hunger Games because the the 75th Hunger Games rule was that they had to pick from the remaining victors. They didn't get new people to go into the Hunger Games. They took people that had already won their Hunger Games in. So for the yes. 50th Hunger Games, the special thing was that there was double the amount of tributes. Yeah. So instead of 24 people and two people from each district, there was four from right. each district. So there was 48 people yeah. and you had to be the one winner, which is insane. Yeah. And yeah. Hamish did it, which isn't a spoiler because he's alive yes. in, the, in the books. Like, Yeah, exactly. Crazy. But yeah, yeah. I'm very excited about it's, that. It I'm sounds a, very exciting. I love the Hunger Games series. I think yeah. it is, it's great. I read it in school. And every time I've thought about rereading it and actually reread it or rewatched the movies, it slaps. Nice. So, well, this one's yes. gonna. This one's very exciting. Yes. But and so, yes. and quickly mm. before we get off that topic, so mo- book comes out when, and then like a year later, book comes out twenty twenty five, and then movie I think is twenty twenty seven. I think it's oh, they're giving it's a couple it two years. years. Okay. Maybe maybe twenty twenty six. Couple years just to stew in the minds of movie goes. Yeah. Cause, yeah. Cool. Or book on. goes. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. I think it's something like that. I know book something is like definitely that. 2025. Mm. Maybe it's end of 2026 as the movie would make sense. Yeah. Yep. Um, but yeah, I, ca- yeah. I lo- also love that has it has been announced as a book and a movie already. Yeah. And the recent one that was like going back on The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Pretty good. Pretty good. It had like Draco Malfoy, the main character or something. Eminem. <laughs> Eminem. Yeah, Slim Shady. <laughs> yeah. Ballads of Slim Shady and Rihanna. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, anyway, sorry. bringing this back to Reel and that was it. And while well, I got this segue, that was a great pr- film production on that with the cinematography and the midget game for Game of Thrones guy. I forgot his name. What's his name? Jay, that's so rude. No, he was great. And he was like addicted to Peter Dinklage. Dinklage. Peter Dinklage. He's yeah. great. You know, he's voicing. Oh my God, so many segues. I'm so sorry. I'm so tired mm-hmm. that I can't stop my brain. Um, Peter Dinklage is voicing Dr. Dillamond in the Wicked movie. Oh, wow. That's cool. Which is the goat professor at <laughs> Wiz. Like. Also, you know what's funny? I, I don't know what that guy... I've never seen an interview of that guy with like just the normal way he speaks. So, I don't know what he sounds like because he also puts on a funny accent in Game everything, of Thrones. Everything. I've seen like Game of Thrones clips. I've always wanted to watch Game of Thrones, but I've never seen it. And then I've just seen little clips of him. And he sounds way different. And then he sounds way different at Songbirds and Snakes. And then he sounds way, yeah, like, what? What does he sound like? The only thing I really know about mystery. Game of Thrones, other than, like, the little spoiler videos that I've seen on, like, Instagram and stuff, like Instagram Reels, mm. is that I remember when it was releasing, they accidentally left a Starbucks coffee cup in one of the shots. Right. Um, and it aired on TV with oh, the Starbucks yeah, coffee cup that. in the shot. And then by the time it went out into streaming, they'd fixed it. But oh. everyone like went off being like, oh my God, I can't believe like yeah, whoever so stuffed funny. that up is insane. So when it was on TV, it was in there. When it aired live on TV, yeah. Yeah. Because it wasn't a direct streaming, right? Yeah. Like they could fix it, but. Oh, got to get back to the segue. I was I'm on so the segue hit. No, that's okay. Um, so those are great productions. But there was also a movie that I recently watched that we we're talking about two minutes ago, five minutes ago. Bad production. Called Hoodwinked that I think had bad production is that yeah. what you call animation? Um, I just think it was very like it felt like a like a rushed, underdeveloped yeah. job. So like if you've ever watched like a Disney or Pixar like 
behind the scenes or the making of animation, it looks like one of their phases before the animation's finished. Mm. Like when they're doing like the rough sketches of the movements and stuff before yeah. it's actually in the final stage. I know we talked about on the last episode, um, we talked a little bit about the movies that released around that time and some of the animated ones looking back. 100%. Like was, I think, Shrek one of them? No, Shrek Incredibles. Thing? Incredibles. So you look at Incredibles. Robots. And they've got all the shadows and reflections and Woodwinked for some reason has no reflections. I think Incredibles is actually no 2003. Yeah. Well, there you go. Like, like even more. Two but years like, before. Robots, Chicken Little. Yeah, Robots. They were all released in 2005. And everything's so fluid and motion, like all their faces have emotion. And I think they spent all their money on their cast and then yeah. went, oh. Because they yeah. had a really good cast. Banger cast. They had Anne Hathaway. Anne Hathaway. In 2005. Exhibit. X to the Z in 2005 when like Pimp My when Ride they were, was on as well. When they were like big names. <laughs> you know, Pimp like My Ride, they, the world's yeah. greatest TV show. <laughs> yes, Jay. <laughs> Goodness. I did used to watch We Pimp need to rewatch that. Actually. I used to watch it a lot. Yeah. They'd be like, we put a fish tank in the back of your yeah. car. We, ha- we have a friend that uh, <laughs> we have a friend that we mentioned on the last podcast who, funny enough, brought on the hoodwinked idea and he mentioned he's just rewatched Pimp My Ride. Really want to rewatch today. Oh, what did this friend say when you said to them today that you rewatched Hoodwink? Oh, <laughs> he was, was very funny. yeah, yeah. So I was mentioning how <laughs> this whole thing that he's going to listen to this and just be like, "What the?" He's, gonna, he's just going to look up from his tools and go, "This freaking idiot's about to <laughs> <laughs> expose me." Um, I just loved it. Yeah, so must have a weird religious obsession with this movie or something. I'm, no. I'm just gonna no, I'm just gonna make it seem really bad. No, don't. Just say it how it is. Anyway, I was saying how bad the production of the movie is and he's like But the story's good. But the story's good and he's like, that's okay. You can be wrong. Yeah. I love that. I think that's <laughs> such the a good response. Thing. <laughs> he's yeah. But no, it's actually really good movie. Like good movie. And it still holds up for adults. Yeah. I yeah. think I think if they remade it today, mm. the the acting in it, like the sound, what's it called? Voiceover work is actually voiceover great. Voiceover work is great. Yeah, yeah. Like it is great. It's mm. the emo- There's the emotion in their voices. It just doesn't translate onto their faces. Yeah, exactly. That's right. And I think there's this one scene that I just want to cap is like capture. <laughs> I should say yes. the full word <laughs> um, is when she's like, looking at the the windows being broken from a rock and it lands on the floor or whatever and she's like running towards the door like directly into the camera and she's just dead face like resting yeah they didn't animate her face and she's like blinking every like three seconds or whatever yeah. but that thing of just like floating towards the door <laughs> it yeah, just gets me it's pretty it's funny it's so creepy but yeah so we thought we'd just update on hoodwinked um yeah story holds up Story holds up. Animation feels like it's from 1992, not 2005. Yeah, it does. Yeah. You're right. Like, it feels like the CGI that was in, like, the first Harry Potter movie with Neville, like, getting thrown around on the thing, the, like, real rubbery, cartoony. Yeah. That's what it feels like. And for 2005, not good enough. Could be better. Could be better. Could, Could be better. definitely be better. But it wasn't one of the big production companies. Yeah. If, so. it, if, all right, to end the review, if you had to rate the review out of, you know, a fruit Rate the review, rate the movie. Uh, if rate the movie, yeah. but you had to rate it with a fruit, what fruit would best represent that movie? Oh, that's a good question. A fruit. Yeah. I've already got mine, I think. I, I would, would say a banana. you say a banana? Would you like me to explain? Yeah, I feel like it's actually going to be really similar to mine. Okay. Okay. So I feel like a banana is absolutely great if it's the perfect ripeness. And I feel yeah. like this is an underripe banana. Where it's like, it's got the, the flavor of a banana. Yeah. But it's also got the really bad texture. Yes. That's yeah. mine. Well, mine, I was going to say an eggplant. Very similar reasons that can actually... Is that a fruit? Well, I was just... Or is it a vegetable? I was thinking a veggie, but... Why'd you ask me for a fruit? Well, it comes off a tree, doesn't it? Eggplant comes off a tree. It's a fruit now. Okay. Um, <laughs> I was thinking an eggplant, but if it was a fruit, it could be a banana because... I think it's held very well on the outside with the story. Yes. But the mushy insides, which is the production, doesn't really hold up. But the mushy inside of an eggplant is only there after you cook it. Right. So after you let it sit with you and you go, that was a great movie. No, it really wasn't. The 
production wasn't there. Yeah, right. Okay. I, yeah. When I was first looking out, I was like, you know, it's, I like that. I like it's that. whatever, but the story's going to make it. And then by the end of it, I was like, it had cooked with me. And I'm like, nah, the production did actually suck. Yeah, cool. Anyway. So, good versus bad. Good versus bad. Let's get Let's to the first thing it. on the episode. <laughs> my, my good for this week is we started booking our honeymoon. Woohoo! So, Jay and I originally were going to do Italy for our honeymoon, but that is too, too expensive. expensive. Sorry, Italy. Um, Your fault. Jay, Jay will still be going to Italy with his work situation with the international scooter competitions. Mm-hmm. I just will not be joining him because we do not have a spare 10K minimum. Yeah. Like, it's insane. It's pretty um, expensive. That's what we wanted to do. So, we're going to do that after we can save for a couple of years to actually get that sorted. But instead, we're going to do... A Disney cruise. Yay, Yay. we're going to do a cruise. Cute honeymoon. So, I am an absolute Disney fiend. I wouldn't say that I'm like a, a big fan, but I definitely like fall back on Disney a lot. Like I grew up with Disney, Disney Channel, Disney movies. Mm-hmm. And I think it's a very much like a nostalgic thing for me to go back to yes. when I feel down or whether I'm sick or whatever, I'll always kind of put on a Disney movie. And then now that Marvel and Disney are connected and all that kind of stuff, it kind of, most of the time I'm choosing Disney plus when we're watching, watching yeah, a right. show, right? Um, so we're going on a Disney cruise. It's going to be really fun. It is from Melbourne to Auckland, which will be so fun. So we're going to actually go over, still go overseas. Mm-hmm. Going to go and explore New Zealand for a little bit for a couple of days afterwards and then fly back home and it's going to be so much fun. It's going to be really cool. Yeah. I'm yeah. very excited I'm about v- it. I'm quite excited as well. I wasn't quite excited at the start of it when we're talking about Disney Cruise. and when it's we like, first oh, thought about it. I just don't want to be in a boat with a bunch of the... What do they call it? They call themselves something like Disney... Disney adults. Disney adults. I don't want to be in a cruise with Disney adults. Yeah. But then after hearing reviews and stuff and like talking with your friends who work on the cruise um yeah it just sounds like they got really good service and someone that follows you around and you it's it's i don't know it just sounds really exciting and i'm a big fan of just boats i've never been on a cruise like so so we did want to do a cruise there's kind of one that everyone kind of goes on um in australia that goes to a couple of different small islands and then back we didn't really want to do that one we wanted to do something a bit more special Mm. um Everyone has said, and I had to do a bit of a deep dive into all the forums and stuff to make sure that Jay wasn't going to be overwhelmed with the amount of Disney because I didn't want to freak him out because, like, I'm fine with it. I love it. I think all the little details are so cool, but I feel like Jay could get overwhelmed very quickly. It actually creeps me out. Yes. (laughs) But we won't um, get into that. (laughs) I feel like I feel like I could actually nearly be a Disney adult if we live near a Disneyland park. Like if we lived in Florida or California, I feel like it could get there, but not to the extent that some people do. Oh yeah, some people go crazy. But I could I could definitely f- see myself having like an annual pass to mm-hmm. Disneyland or Disney World. Mm. I know I know often. we're on your good, but just a quick thing. Have you seen that uh I'm pretty certain it was Disney World. Um but it might be in Japan or something. There's a specific ride that people just go to, Disney adults go to, and stand out all day and dance in front of it. And it's like a bumper cars. And there's a I've never heard almost of this. like a cult like thing. I'll have to get the details out of it. Maybe I can get the details throughout the episode, but I've never heard of that. There's a cult where people, but not a cult, but it's cult like. <laughs> they just hang out there all day from open Careful. till close. There is actually. I don't a, want to roll up the Disney. There is adults. actually a TikTok dance call at the moment. So yeah, oh jeez, yeah. Um, but yeah, so to get Jay a bit excited, we went on Disney Plus, um, and looked at a documentary on the making of the new Disney cruise ship, which is the Disney Wish. We'll be going on the Disney Wonder, which was built in the year I was born in 1999. Yep, year of our um, lord. <laughs> and that was weird. Um, and so this one was built only a couple of years ago. It's the Disney Wish, and it was actually a really good documentary. I think it was really cool with the, like the amount cool. of effort they put into it and all the all the different things. And mm. I was explaining to Jay about how you have a service team that go around with you every night to the restaurant. So you get to go to every restaurant at least once, and it just rotates through the dining. And you have the same server and assistant server the whole time. So, like, when you would walk in for dinner, 
they'll already have your favorite choice of drink sitting on the table ready for you kind of thing, Mm. you know, like it's just the little things like that. And And they just follow you around. There's plenty of adult only areas. Um, Mm. A lot of the people that we know that have been on Disney cruises have said you can't really like tell that there's a lot of kids and you can really easily avoid all the Disney stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like if you don't want to go and meet the characters, just don't go and meet the characters. Just go the opposite way. Yeah, like just don't do that. The boat's like um, a thousand feet long. <laughs> I said to Jay that we should like get... 300 meters. <laughs> I've started collecting these really cute Disney picture books for our very in the, in the future children um, because they were very cute on special and they sit in a rainbow order on my bookshelf. I said we should bring some onto the cruise to get the characters to sign them because I thought that would be a really cute cool. cute thing to have it signed by like the character at the, on the book. But yeah, so that'd be a cool mm. thing. But yeah. definitely excited. We'll give you a full review once we're off the ship. Oh, yeah, we got to do And we'll be like able that. to put in some, maybe we'll be able to put in some footage and video of. Of the trip. Of the trip. Yeah, that'd be cool. On yeah. there, that would be pretty cool. Um, yeah. What was your good? Did you do your, your bad? Or you just want to go straight to my good? Oh, I can do my bad if you want. Yeah, you can do your, okay. you do your bad. Um, my bad is like a good slash bad. Like it's it's good. That's good. I'm doing it to myself, but it's kind of like a bad vibe. <laughs> so um, I've been really grinding work lately. So I've just started a full-time mm-hmm. job. Still got like two casual jobs. Which your casual job was basically full-time before that, but now you're... Yes, yes, you have yes. a full time job. Yes. yes, so I've gotten like a so full time job. The, so yeah. I've actually got to be there. Um, I worked out <laughs> that in all of June I will only have one day off. Nice. Every Bad. single day I'm working <laughs> at some point in the day. Some of the shifts are six hours. Some of the shifts are eight hours. Most of my shifts are eight hours because that's my full time job. But um, and then as soon as July starts, we have family coming. So by like the twentieth of July, I will need to be. Yeah. In recovery mode. In hibernation. Yeah, every, outside of work, which will be fun. But I'm doing it to myself. I'm not wearing myself out too much. I'm still able to do th- fun things like the podcast. That's cool. I still have enough. Chilling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I just need to really prioritize health and rest for the rest of this month, I think. Yeah. And we do that. Yeah. But yeah, that's my, that's that's my bad kind well, of good. If you can't make a, a pod, then we... We'll have some guests that can actually jump on in the next coming, in the coming weeks. In the next two weeks, I'm yeah. sure my friend will want to come on the pod. Yeah, and then Jay's brother might want to come on the pod too. Yeah, he's actually an experienced podcaster. He, he has, might be able to do more a than a couple of episodes. He might be able to. He might have done more than us by this point. My goodness, <laughs> we're after what episode six? Yeah. Okay. What's yeah. your? Uh, so my good. Yikes! I didn't actually think of a good. Wow. How's that? Um, I mean, yeah, watching Hoodwinked and nostalging on that was great. Uh, oh, dude. I don't actually know. Actually, I have a good, but it's just kind of a nerdy good. Um, I've been waiting for an update on a game that I've been following for near on seven years. Yeah. And they finally did this big update, so I'm really almost, like, just happy for the, the game devs. If anyone's into game development, it's like a game where you like fully build a car with every like nut and bolt it's like really nerdy Mm -hmm. but they made it multiplayer and to sync up that many parts is crazy so i've been playing that with a friend and yeah it's just a really cool experience and they're still working on these guys just grind out yeah it's really cool that is interesting if you're into game development i'd love to talk about it Hmm. but okay so on the bad side um bad I was going to say the name I called him before, but no, Jack Miller. <laughs> Jay called him Daddy Miller before, I called him Boo Boo Daddy Miller, yeah, <laughs> which is weird. Okay, but Jack Miller. Jack, where does he go? He still I doesn't don't know. Have a, he still doesn't have a confirmed seat. For there's no GP seat next for season. him yet. And there's talk. there was talks of him going to Honda, but we'll talk about why that's not going to happen in a, in a moment. Yeah, so... Like, oh, it's just who knows. Your bad kind of talks in, like, leads into what we were going to talk about. It leads about. into the topic of that. We're going so, to talk about that. This is what we're going to talk Let's about. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about who is confirmed so far in mm. MotoGP 2025 season. Yeah. And then what seats are left up for grabs? Right. So I know not every listener is going to know exactly everyone on a MotoGP grid or whatever or no. even be interested in the sport, but... It's a great sport, and currently the world's fastest circus is having a wild circus of its own in the rider market. So. Yes, and also, um, if you don't like 
follow MotoGP and you want to just like skip to the last segment, which is a game segment, I'll just let you know what that is. So um, I've pulled a bunch of Gen Z sayings and terms and things like that. And I'm going to see what Jay, if Jay <laughs> if can, can guess, guess what them. they are. <laughs> Um, so if you want to, you can skip to that, but I highly recommend listening to this because it's such interesting, like team politics kind of situation. Correct. It's really interesting. So, so, uh, do, so do you want me to go through what happened? I, no, I think we should go who's confirmed. Or just who's confirmed. Who's confirmed. Oh, okay. So I'll try and do it in order of how it actually I've, came out. I've got the list of that. Okay. Of who's confirmed. You've got the list of what seats are available still. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you go yours. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> like, we we discussed this. You yes. Know. Okay. So the factory teams are like the main teams. Is that right? Is that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah. That's like your Ferrari, your Red Bull. Right. Yeah. 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 So the Ducati factory team, Peke Banyaya. Two-time world champion, like back-to-back so far. Current reigning champion. Current reigning champion as well. Mm. So he's on a team and his teammate is now Marc Marquez. Yeah, who's like 13-time champion. Big change. Ducati is going to be a force to be reckoned with next season. But there's also a history there of like Banyaya and Marquez not exactly – Getting along. No. Exactly so it'll be so. a very interesting team layout to see how that goes next season. Yeah. Um, KTM, we've got the rookie, Pedro Acosta. Yep. He has been confirmed KTM seat, but that makes sense because KTM has pretty much been bringing him up. Yep. Uh, Brad Binder is confirmed again because he's been really steady with getting a lot of points. Like, what is he in the championship at the moment? Like, fifth, sixth, fourth? Uh, yeah, he's, he's up there. He's consistent. Yeah. Certainly consistent. So, Aprilia is confirmed. Jorge Martin. Is anyone else confirmed on Aprilia? Uh, not on Aprilia just yet. Okay, so that's one of the open seats. Yeah. So, Jorge Martin moved to Aprilia. He did. So, he's the one that sort of kicked it all off um, yeah. with... Him not jumping on that factory Ducati seat. Actually, no. He was going to, he was all but signed to the factory Ducati yeah. seat. But then Marc Marquez did an interview and said he would take nothing less. Yeah, pretty much. And then Ducati yeah. did a big switch up and pretty much Marquez swept the rug from underneath Martin's feet. Pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. And then, yeah, so he went on to Aprilia and then Marquez got confirmed as that seat. Um, yeah. And that kind of kicks off what happened on the other KTM satellite team, which would be the first satellite team that we kind of look at. So Aprilia signing Jorge Martin, they had Maverick Vinales. Um, so he, so basically Jorge Martin's jumped in. Alicia Spargris, he, he's retired. Yeah. Because he, he's been in the game forever. Been a great help for Aprilia. Maverick Vinales would have been that second rider, but they spent all that money on Martin. Martin that they couldn't actually offer the exact same salary to, or even up the salary of Maverick Vinales, who's of got he's currently on. He's got yeah. like three, what two re- featured race wins and like three sprint races this year. Like he's being really good. So he's gone over to the satellite team of KTM because they got the cash, cashola. Mm. To pay for race winners. Actually, yeah, KTM is really. They've got a team they're next year. Beefing up. They've their got team. a team next year. Yeah, they are really trying to come out to be a force to be reckoned with. Yeah, alongside, you know, this um, very experienced and you know capable race winner Maverick Vinales. They've also got Bastianini, who was fighting for the championship like two years ago, and is also still sneakily getting up in those. Yeah, he's still top still fours. getting that, those points. And he's um, only been in the game for like three, four years, maybe. And he's coming from the like all the knowledge that he's gotten from Ducati as well, and being on a team with Benyaya and all that kind of stuff. He's yeah. he's coming from that as well, which is just a wealth of knowledge. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, to finish off the factory teams, we've got Yamaha Quattararo has confirmed again. He is a Yamaha boy. Yeah, Yamaha boy. And then his part, his teammate has been confirmed. Has Alex, it? no, Alex Rins, but most likely Alex will just stay. Um, yeah. With them. Yeah, Anyhow. that sounds right. So Honda, we've got Luca Marini and you have the second Honda seat. Yeah, Joan Mir has signed just as of yesterday. We're filming this. Um, he signed yesterday, um, which was kind of odd because 
you can tell he doesn't want to ride that thing, that bike, because yeah. it sucks currently. But both him and Luca Marini, to their credit, said the bike was way worse at the start of the year and already Honda's making a lot of changes. Okay, so they are getting better. So it's r- rideable, <laughs> I guess. Right. Yeah. It's, it's a unicycle, but that's okay. So a very interesting thing that we have seen is with the first satellite team or satellite teams in general, the Ducati satellite teams are kind of in a bit of a up-in-the-air-to-be-confirmed state. Yes. So yeah. what you were telling me about this the other so, day with how many bikes. How many bikes they've got. Yeah, so they've pulled back how many current factory bikes they can have. So that next year they're only going to have, I believe it's... Six. Six. Oh, well, it's going to be four that are 2025 model bikes. Yeah. And one of the teams has to take the 2024 bikes. Now, I'm pretty certain Ducati and the Valentino Rossi 46 team, VR46 team, they're going to have the up-to-date bikes. I'm pretty certain it's that. It could be Grassini, but whatever it is, so, the other one out of VR46 or Grassini is going to run this year's bikes, this current so year's So, definitely Ducati is going to have the 2025 bike. Pramac? Yeah, that's 20, the 20, question. Like, is Pramac going to go to Yamaha? Because the three of them have... So there's the three satellite teams that are kind of under the Ducati umbrella, which is Pramac, VR46, and Grassini. Yeah. So So there's rumors that Pramac is looking at becoming a satellite team for Yamaha. Interesting. So they're going to run Yamaha bikes. Now, weird, wild theory on this. In my opinion, I'm like, dude, they've been talking about this for so long that it can't not be in the cards like heavily for them it can't like they can't be rumoring and talking about this for so long halfway through the season when like if it's not going to happen so in my eyes i'm like they are going to go to yamaha as soon as the rumor kind of comes up you're like like, it's all but yeah well they can't they like it's either they go to yamaha in the next couple weeks or that's it they're staying ducati because it's like they can't talk about this mid-season to have change. a bike for next year. Yeah. Either that so, or they're just going to buy those factory bikes off Yamaha and just use the same stuff and then worry about a 2027 bike for themselves. Yeah. So, um, interesting. Because the regulations change for those who oh, also yes. don't follow MotoGP. The regulations yeah. are having a huge change in 2027. So, yeah. So, an interesting thing is Ducati's actually already signed a rider to one of these teams. To fill one of those seats, yeah. To be confirmed. But um, last year's Moto G- Moto Two like campaign rider Furman Aldeguer. Yes, yeah, yeah. Which is really cool. Young rookie. Yeah, he's yeah. So he's, he's only really nineteen. Good too. Yeah, he's quick. Um, so even be really from his exciting. first time in Moto Two, he was really quick. Another theory about that: Will he go to um, VR forty six? Because all right, so they've got Digi. Question is, is Digi, Fabio Digi, Digi Antonio, is he going to look to go with Martin on Aprilia or is he going to stay with Ducati? Because if he stays with Ducati, oh, by the way, he's also said he really wants a factory seat. Yeah. So that's why question is the only factory seat he can take is really looking to be Aprilia. That's the only one he could, that's really left because Alex Rins is quite set at Yamaha and they love him and he's doing great. So if he really wants a factory seat, the only one he can talk to is Aprilia, but our boy Miller also can talk for that seat. Exactly. But the question is they'd probably take Digi based on results. Yes. So So are they going to put him in VR46 because mm. he's cheaper to keep Digi, to offer Digi more money? Yeah, you're very right. Yeah, yeah. So we already talked about Tech 3 with Fashionini and Vinales. Mm-hmm. So we've also got Trackhouse. Both of them spots have not been confirmed. They've not been confirmed, but... Being so, an American rider, Joe Roberts, he's gonna jump up to MotoGP as well, um, supposedly, and not confirmed, but, but pretty certain if he's gonna go somewhere, it's gonna be that American track house team. Yes. And then it's just up to them whether sense. they keep Oliveira or Ralph Fernandez because they're both great riders, but Oliveira probably has the more experience mm-hmm. and he's actually put that bike in the top five a couple of times at the start of the year. Yeah. Um, LCR Honda has Zarco. Yes. Uh, LCR Honda has Johan Zarco. 
And they have Taka Nakagami, but he's not confirmed, so who oh, knows? Oh, yeah, Nakagami. And there's also a rider that from Moto2 that looks quite good that he could take that seat as well, which is Ayagura, who was, f- was runners-up for last year's championship yep. in Moto2. So maybe there's even a chance that he could do that because that, um, that second seat for LCR is kind of reserved for an Asian um, – or what, do you call, what would you call it? An Asian – nationality rider because it's Itamitsu Honda, yeah, which correct. is yep. the, the brand. So, yeah, question is, is Ayagura going to go on that seat and kick mm. out Takanaka Gami? Because he hasn't really had results, but Takanaka kind of, he has a lot of... I love his name. Takanaka, yeah, it's so good. <laughs> um, he has a lot of love over there in, in Asia when they go to like Motegi and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, you're correct. Um, yeah. I, I think in the next couple of weeks when all the rest of this gets confirmed, I just hope, like I hope our Aussie Jack has a seat. Mm. Well, that, that leaves the question, like, where does Jack go? Because the main thing he has on his side, it's not race results, obviously, but it's that PR, it's the Aussie support. It's building up the team. Yeah. Not even saying that because we're Aussie podcasters, like, actually in the realm of MotoGP and stuff, Aussies are a huge majority of And everyone also says that the Phillip Islands race is the biggest yep. and it's there's a reason why it's at the end yep. of the season. Americans love him as well. Yeah. Um, he's got a huge fan support over in the in Europe as well where he lives. Yeah. Or well, where he lived for many years. Um very crazy. Yeah. And he's just he's got that PR. He's got the likable character. Much 100%. like Danny Rick and Yeah. Ozzy's just What is with Ozzy? Literally. And even in Motocross at the moment, we've got Jet Lawrence and his brother. I can't remember his brother's name. Oh, it's slipping off the top of my head. Anyway, the Lawrence brothers yes. are owning Supercross World and they're like Yeah. Happy go lucky Aussies. Crazy. It's nuts. But so yes. So, hoping Jack can get a seat. So question quickly before I put it in. But would Jack maybe go now now that, that Honda seat's confirmed, because they were talking maybe he'll go to Honda and take Joan Mir's seat on the factory Honda mm. team. Now that that's taken as well, it could be quite likely you might see Jack in World Superbikes. Yeah. It looks more and more likely that Someone has got it to. It does. He's got to like Jack. Check your emails because there's got to be something in there. Oh, hundred percent. Someone like yeah. there's got to be teams galore just going like jump on this world superbike because could you imagine like those personalities? Top rack, Bautista and yeah. Jack. Oh, it'd be crazy. Yeah. I'm just I'm just hoping he doesn't go to world superbikes. Yeah. Give him Sam Lowe's seat. Okay. No, no. no <laughs> Much love like, to that guy. But. <laughs> I feel like I feel like he still has a couple more years of MotoGP in him. Yeah. If he sorts whatever is going on out. Mm. But I also think he could really get some good results in yeah. World Superbikes. Yeah. Really good results. I think in like, I only say that because I don't believe like Jack's struggling. I think it's just a bad year. Like because yeah. last year he did great on the whatever the KTM was called yeah. last year. Yeah. He still did great. It definitely had his falls, but like yeah, this year it's kind of taken that downward turn even more. I think he's just in a, in a so. funk. Yeah. I hope it's just a like funk. Like he's just lost the rhythm of yeah. it. It'd be great to see an Aussie up there again, but yeah. His mind might be elsewhere too. He's just had a baby. Like Yeah, had a baby and his dad brain. Yeah. Yeah. Dad brain. But World Superbike would have more leeway for that kind of stuff. Yeah. It's... uh. Yeah. But yeah, and he's will... and he's proven on that kind of bike as well. He did the Aussie Super Bikes and like whooped a bunch of people's butt, butts. Yeah. But uh, so we will keep updating with the MotoGP yeah. as it as it develops in the next couple of weeks because we're obviously obsessed with MotoGP and mm-hmm. all the things. Um, so yeah. definitely we'll keep you updated. But if you have any ideas, um, and comments or concerns or theories, or even something we should talk about, yeah, something we or should raise theories a theory or anything, let us know. Chuck us, chuck us a thing in the comments. Yeah. So, what we're going to do for the rest of this episode is I've found a bunch of sayings that are Gen Z. We're both not Gen Z. We're both cusping millennial Gen Z. We're definitely in the middle. We're I'm definitely not as far leaning, from Gen Z as I'd like to be. Yes. We're definitely <laughs> leaning more millennial than Gen Z because we've both only got older siblings. Yeah. We're both definitely like more 90s kids than 2000s kids. 
So yes, yes. I found a bunch of sayings. I also do have them in a sentence if you need. Okay. So you can, I'll say what the word is. Me can't, get into my Gen Z mode. If you can't guess what it means, you can ask for it in a sentence. Yep. So would you, are you ready for the first one? Go for it. Okay. BBG. Uh, can I have it in a sentence? Oh, I love that dress on you, BBG. Baby girl. Baby girl. <laughs> baby girl. Baby Correct. Because I know <laughs> Bibi, like Bibi. baby. Yeah, like Bibi. baby. Baby girl. <laughs> what up, baby? Okay. Like, yeah, baby. Bibi G. <laughs> baby girl. Baby G. Yeah. All right. Uh, bed rot. Bed rot. Yep. Bed rot. Uh, can I have that in a sentence? Sure. Bed rot. After a hectic week, I'm looking forward to some much needed bed rot this weekend. Bed rot. Does that just mean you're, bed rot. you're gonna like bed rot. R O T. Bed, bed rot. rot. I'm looking forward to bed rot. Does that mean you're just gonna lie in bed <laughs> for a while? Staying a, staying in bed for a really long time, just binging TV shows, movies, stuff like That's that. That's called bed rot. Bed rot. I've definitely had a bed rot moment, probably during COVID. I had bed but rot too. I do that yeah. so I would love probably to have bed rot often. on the weekend. <laughs> no, no. Yeah. Yeah, You're that's be, bed you rot. Would be, you would be couch rot. Couch rot. I'm definitely a couch rot kind yeah. of guy. Before yeah. I ever bed rot. Yeah. You you get out of bed as soon as you yeah, wake up in the so morning. You, yeah, I know. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> I know. <so funny. laughs> okay, these are also in alphabetical order, yeah. non intentional, but chat. Chat, as in that's chat? No. Oh. Would you like it in a sentence? Yes, please. Chat, do you think he's telling the truth? <laughs> As in, like, streamers? Like, if I was live streaming this to the audience? But IRL. IRL. But IRL. Chat. Chat. Apparently, Gen Z people will go, in real life, they will go... To just the group. To a group of people, they'll just go, chat. Do you think he's telling the truth? No. They will They will call... Gen Z. They will call a group of people, like, chat. friends, people in their class, whatever. They'll be like, chat. What do you think? What do you think, Chat. Like they're streamers. Like they're streaming. That's, that's, <laughs> oh I was going to say a word. It's so that's bad. That's effed. That is it's properly so effed. No way. I, if I hear someone do that. It's like chronically online. Well, that's a crime. Yeah, that it's is so a, That bad. is criminal it's behavior. So <laughs> Certified so gremlins. Okay. Are you ready Jeez. for the next one? Yeah, sure. Gassin. Gassin. Now, this one, I know this because <laughs> we say this in like the scooter world. Like that's like, I'm gassed on that. Is if you if you're gassing like you're hyping, yeah. you're hyped as. So it's kind of different. You're on your shit. Like gassing <laughs> is like hyping someone up, but gassing also can mean like exaggerating someone's abilities. Oh, like, okay. Oh, she's already confident enough. She doesn't need any more gassing. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Like you don't need to gas her up anymore. That's like like the UK people say. Like roadmen say bear. Like that's a lot, but also bear means bad. Yeah. Like, that's. Yeah. Okay. Are you ready for the next one? Yeah, go for it. High key. High key. Oh, not this stuff. I know people say like high key, low key. High key. I don't know what it means. Well, so what's low key mean? Well, I know low key means like discreetly, like between you and like me. Like low key, like, it's this. Is that what it means? Like Yeah, yeah. Discre- low key is like, oh, low key, it's actually pretty good. Yeah, like, so don't, let anyone, like don't let anyone know, but I think so Hoodwinked so was actually key? fantastic. Is high key literally just tell everyone you know? Overt, obvious. Something that's obvious. Yeah, done with a high level high of intensity. High key, that glass is see-through. No, no, no. Is that- it's like done with a high level of intensity. So like, oh, dude, I actually high, I high, high key. key. No. <laughs> no I'm I high key love that new movie. Like high key. Not even going to hide it. Right, okay. Like, just complete overt. High key hoodwinked was fantastic. High key. Slaps. There you go. Okay, high key. Okay, the next thing. I know I hear people say that, and I just don't know. Yeah, it I means just it means they're not afraid to like tell you that it's that they like it. High key. You know, like high key. I think that's. Yeah. I just object and go. Excuse me. I think it's called a haiku. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so next one. Ick. Ick. I've said this. Yeah, you say that's an ick. Yeah. Now that is just like that's something that gets on grinds my gears. Not so much grinds my gears. Would you like me to use it in a sentence? Yes, please. 
Oh, did you see how mean he was to his little brother? That's such an ick. That's such an ick. Just something you disagree with? It's like a turn off. Oh, something. Like, so I don't like, want to talk to that like person disgust. because. Like a feeling of disgust towards like someone or something. Yeah. So, like, I suppose that's what it is. A something of, icky. Like. A lot of women make an ick list of things that they see an a guy do and it's an immediate turn off. What? Like a guy, like some of the stupidest things, like a guy opening up an umbrella inside or like a guy trying yeah. to close an umbrella, immediate ick. Yeah. Or All a guy right. like when he puts on a hoodie but doesn't tuck in the shirt from underneath, immediate ick. Oh, I've got one that's on my ick list for other dudes if you untie your shoelaces before you take them off. That's an Sure. Ick. Yeah, exactly. Like it's you little should just things do the like foot that. on the ankle thing. It's yeah, little, right. Like I understand. Chewing with your mouth That's open. very fun. Ick. That's enjoyable yeah. to make ick lists. It's probably very rude. Ick list. But yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Yeah. Ick. Yeah. There you go. This is another one I say. I genuinely thought it was just ick was like, oh, that's like, oh, that grinds my gears that people do. Oh, I suppose that's what it is, it's like right? When, it's like when people say like. Oh, people do that. Oh, that sucks. It's that literally, it's literally yeah, yeah. putting a word to you going, ugh. Yeah, pretty much. It's that's ick. ick. Ugh. ugh. When it's icky, it makes you feel icky. How do you spell that? Ugh. E U G H? Ugh. Maybe, yeah. yeah but ick is I C K. But like, yeah, when yeah. something makes you feel like icky and uncomfortable and like grossed out. Ick. 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 Yeah. This yeah. one I've said before. Menti B. Menti B. Yep. That mental breakdown? Yeah. <laughs> Having a menti B. <laughs> so I think I said I think I've said before, oh, I do fear I'm on the edge of a menti B. <laughs> I do fear. I do fear I'm a I'm a I'm one wrong stir away from a Menti B. Jeez. Yeah. Okay, this one I had never heard before. I'm one messed up drive through order from a Menti B. That's what <laughs> no. you are. That's what you are. That's one hundred percent a mood. Yeah. <laughs> okay. This next one I've never heard of before. And I don't know whether it's real, but I'm assuming it's real because all the rest of these yeah. have been real so far. Mogging. 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 Uh, isn't that no, that's exactly what people say in the UK. Oi, mate, on my way to work, I was in a mugging. <laughs> no. Some bloke ran, just ran up Would with a like gun and a I sentence? was in a mugging. Would you like it? <laughs> yeah, go for it. I wonder if Jared realises he's mugging everyone in the weight room. What? Mugging? <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of gross because the only thing I can think close is munging it, which is no, totally no. Right. <laughs> Mugging. <laughs> mugging. He's mugging everyone. Is that like? In the weight room. I'm going to go for it. Like, is like it at the gym. Staring? No. Oh. It's one upping someone on appearance or attractiveness. Oh, so that's a compliment. It's a compliment. No, oh well, kind God. of He's like totally a backhanded compliment. Everyone. No, but kind of a backhanded compliment. Like, do you realize, does, do you reckon he realizes yeah. that he's mogging everyone? So it's like almost like, oh, he thinks he's top shit. Yeah, kind of. That's such a superficial like thing. Like one I mean, upping. That's so superficial. <laughs> like one upping someone. Yeah. 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 So like mogging. It's, yeah, it's like when they come and they, you can tell Jared. they've dressed up. Far out, Jared. You're <laughs> mogging everyone. I just couldn't say that. I couldn't see myself. Like I that. couldn't say it. No. Oh, bloody hell, Jared. You're mogging everyone in the lobby again. <laughs> <laughs> you're just walking around glistening. I just can't. Un- yeah. I no. just can't see no. myself saying mogging. No. Not seriously. But Jared, you bloody think you're top shit. I don't know. Okay. Next one. Yeah. Go for it. Pressed. Pressed. Um, I think I'm going to get this wrong, <laughs> but I know I'm going to get it right for some things. So I see Would some, you like it in a sentence? I've seen like a video before, this is only just the other day of like on YouTube and you know, it gives you like pretty effed up videos. It was like one that said like <laughs> well, your YouTube gangster does. <laughs> pressed motorbike riders or whatever. And he like comes up, he's like a gangster and he's, I think he's just like, I still don't understand what it means in the video, but he's like. In the video where it said he was pressed, he's just like ready to fight someone. So fight. does it mean you're like ready to fight? No. Pressed. Would you like it in a sentence? What does it mean? Would you like it in a sentence? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Why what? are you so pressed? Pressed. Why are you so pressed? Or why are you so pressed about that? Why am I so pressed about that? Yeah. Why are you so pressed about not, work? Not pissed off? No? No. Pressed. It's more, do you want the answer? Yeah, go for it. It's feeling annoyed or stressed about something. 
It's like, dude, you are oh. so so pressed about work. You need to chill out. So we took two words, two letters out of pressure, stressed. stressed. Oh yeah, as, yeah. So two words, yeah, and then made them like, no, no, into no. stress. You are so pressed about work. You pressed. just need to actually chill. That's You're right. So pressed okay, about pressured and stressed. Thing. Yeah, under pressure and stress. Yeah. All right, that is totally different to what I thought because I'm pretty certain there's a thing called pressing, which is what gangsters do, where they're like, "Yo, right. I'm gonna I'm gonna fight you if you don't get out of my space." That's All pressing, right. I think. Are you ready for the next one? But anyway, yep, go for it. Put on blast. Now, has this like changed meaning? Because everyone should know what put on blast mean, right? Yeah. I feel like that's more of a what millennial thing. Is? Isn't it like put on blast? Like, like when you say it to someone, like, I'm going to put you on blast mm. for that. It means like, oh, that's, that's wrong. I'm going to tell everyone. Yeah. To embarrass someone publicly. Yeah, yeah. The the actual um, thing is over social media by denouncing media. or exposing them. Ooh, expose. They've explained, yeah. So the thing was, yeah. oh, he was put on blast for breaking up over text kind of thing. Right. Right? Like, yeah. 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 Next one. That was like a spicy status back in the day. Yes. Would be, a, a, would be putting someone on blast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Right. Next one. Go for it. Riz. Riz. Again, I don't quite know what it means, but I've got sounds on Discord that say Riz and it's just like a sexy sound. Would you like it in a sentence? So, would you like it in a sentence? Oh, give me a sentence because you're obviously very impressed by your <laughs> sentence. That boy has so much Riz. He hasn't been single since elementary school. Yeah, yeah. So I think it means, because I'm just going off the sounds and the sentence you've said, yeah. like it's sexy sounds when you press Riz. It's like, <laughs> like the guitar, the sexy guitar. Yeah. Shit. Um. <laughs> Riz is like hitting on someone. Yeah, it's like the ability to seduce or like charm. Like if you're rizzing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, he got what so a, much riz. That word just makes me want to gag. I know. It's disgusting. <laughs> riz it's, it's, sounds very similar to another word. Exactly. That ends with is. And, is and starts with j. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's what I think. Like if you're rizzing on someone, it's completely different yeah. if you mess that up. Yeah. So it's the ability to like charm or seduce a producer, a potential love interest. Yeah, so like, yeah. So like, middle schoolers, God. right? Like in like <laughs> in like grade five, like seven, eight, and nine in Amer- in Australia, like middle school in America, like the kids, the little the boys will come in and be like, "Oh, I got so much riz." I've got so much riz right now. I'm talking like five girls. Girl, I'm. <laughs> Just, I'll probably riz you up at our wedding. <laughs> That's just so disgusting. Like, um, yeah. It just doesn't sound right. Riz. It sounds like it sounds very close to an assault. Yeah. Yeah. So I've said this next one a couple of times. Okay. Yeah. Ready? So I've probably heard this one around You've the You've probably realms. heard this one. Say less. Yeah. No, <laughs> say less, I know. Say less. Like, um, it's definitely one that girls do. <laughs> The sentence. Yeah. Oh no. To be honest, I've heard the boys say this. Some Would of you the like boys the back sentence? Home. Yeah. Yeah. Say say your sentence. When she suggested going to their favorite restaurant, he simply nodded and said, "Say less." Yeah. That's <laughs> see. That's exactly what I was thinking. It's like I see like a girl going, "Girl, say less." Like I agree. We're doing that. Yeah. So it's, it's agree. Yeah. No. Ag- agree and understanding. Yeah. No further explanation is needed because the point has been understood. Yeah, say less, like, girl. You don't need less. to explain. Say less. That's what I've got in my head. Say less. Like exactly that. Like, it's like so when go, you look go at to a restaurant as well. <laughs> after we've had yeah, dinner. Yeah, that's it. That's what we're doing. Say less. After we've had dinner and you look at me and you go, do you want some ice cream? Say less. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, it's always that. <laughs> say say less. less. Ice cream? Yes. Yeah. Ice magic? Say Don't less. Don't even know why you are. Say less. No, not even a question. <laughs> okay, the next one. What would be the opposite of that? Say more. Like, you don't, you don't Explain. agree. Explain. You don't agree. So, you just like, say more. <laughs> like... <laughs> <laughs> like, we gonna, oh my goodness. you want to go to KFC? We're going to start this. Millennials <laughs> are going to ruin Gen Z sayings. Oh my goodness. They're just like, oh, you want to go to KFC? Girl, I was thinking we can go to KFC. Say, say more. more. <laughs> <laughs> say more. No, say more. No, say more. Well, and then it's like, they oh. wouldn't even say no because say less is agreeing. So it would just be yeah. say more. Oh, okay. Would you like to go to McDonald's and said, say, say more? more. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's, <laughs> it gets more aggressive. Oh, my God. Girl, say more. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> like, as they get further and further away from what they want. <laughs> That's silly. Okay. The uh, next one. Yep. Simp. Simp. I know what simping is. Dude, you're being such a simp. Dude, you're simping. It's maybe a. 
Sorry. <laughs> it's like Simpin is just Simp Simp Simpin on some scissor. That's what came into my head. Totally just nope. autistic out. Um Jay. <laughs> Jeez. Um Simpin is like you're loving someone. Not loving, but like fiending over like desperate? Desperate, yeah, like desperate love. Desperate for affection. And it's very or prevalent online or something, isn't it? Like streamers. Oh, you like can tell when simp someone's being a simp, yeah. In like chat rooms or whatever. Yeah, so or like it's rooms, someone like who's like desperate streamers. desperate for affection or like romantic relationships and stuff. Mm. I usually see it in the meme form. I think that's why I don't understand it is because yeah. I'll see like a thing where it'll be like Jordan Peterson or whatever and they go, oh, I'm just totally simping over Jordan Peterson right. today. <laughs> it's like someone who's pretending to be him. Like, yeah. Yeah. Um, this next one I've said before too. Yeah. Um, Simpin. Yeah. <laughs> Smut. Smut. <laughs> now that sounds gross. <laughs> it's not as gross as you Smut. think. Smut. Like if I'm thinking, I'm thinking of like smart dude because smart just means something that's like overtly like raunchy in the worst of context right like if if that's oh that's a very smutty thing get that out you're, of here you're kind of right on the raunchy kind of situation so right would you like my yeah go for it sentence that book is just smart pure yeah smart. like it's just pure it's pure smart. raunchy context that, yep. like they didn't need to be in there so it's ex sexually explicit written content like romance novels or fan fiction as in every book you read no <laughs> but do you know there's actually a thing in the book talk community about like they actually give books with smut levels or spice levels yeah yeah your app to make that as sure well. uh-huh we talked about that yeah so i don't read books that are overly smutty mm. i like just a sprinkle of it yeah like, I like it when it's tasteful. If the book is literally 90% smart, that's just porn. Yeah, that is not just even a, hesitation. Well, it's erotica. Yeah. Like, no. I'm just not. Like, no. <laughs> I will, if it, if it moves the story along, I'm happy about it. Not going to read it when it's literally just that and no plot. The audiobooks for that are very weird, in my opinion. Yes. I've had some smutty audiobooks from your recommendation. Oh, damn. Before, before I told you what it was, I should have said, you've engaged in smut. And see yeah, what you said. And, then you would have and I would have been like, Whoa, what have I done? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I wasn't thinking of it in the book context, to be honest. Yeah. I didn't realize it was like just books. I was more like like someone. Oh, just in general. Yeah. You know, I kind of, I in almost in my head, I suppose I was thinking it's almost a more tolerable way of saying that's slutty. Like, oh, oh right, that's right. such a smutty thing to do. Like, go you, yeah, do yeah. that somewhere else. Being very posh. Um, I've got three more. Go for it. So this one is I've heard a lot. You've probably heard because Brett Cooper says it. Uh -huh. um, it's touch grass. Touch grass. Yeah. Have you? I don't. It's like, girl, you need to go actually, touch grass. I don't, I don't actually watch her too much nowadays, but I do enjoy her stuff. Um. Touch grass. I've definitely heard. It's like, them dude, say you that. need to go out and touch grass. Definitely heard her say that. Touch grass. Uh, does it just mean like you, you're chronically inside? Someone thinks you're like chronically inside. So they're saying you should go out into nature and see, see the sun. It's kind of like that, but it's more of an um, online, offline sense. So it's like if you're chronically online, no, 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 you need to go out in the real world. Go touch grass. So it is that. Yeah, it's like get go offline. get some sun. No, no, no. It's get offline and go into the real world. Oh, they're saying it as you need in to, like you need to get grounded. You need to, yeah. Like ground yourself. Go and touch grass. Like you're up here and everyone else is down get here. Get offline. Is that what they're saying? Yeah. You are too chronically online right. that you've forgotten what's actually real. Go to the real world and touch grass. So they're trying to like ground you. Yeah. Bring yeah. you back down. Bring, yeah. you, bring you offline. Like that idea is that idea's whack. That idea is smart. Just like some of the what. insane things that Touch people grass. think are normal these days and like uh, mm. that are like completely justified things. It's like, no, 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 you need to go in the real world, touch grass for a bit. Go yeah. and touch grass. Like, like go out into the real world, see how it is. Like, girl, you, Gas and Mugen, <laughs> go and touch grass. Mugen. Mugen, you're way up. <laughs> Mugen, what the? <laughs> what the hell did I say? Okay. Yeah, I've got, yeah. yeah, two more. So nice. The next one. 
Unk. Unk. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> unk. Unk. Would you like in a sentence? Yes, please. Just walking up those stairs made me so tired. I think I've reached unk status. <laughs> like old? Like <laughs> uncle? It is something to do like uncle. Really? Yeah, yeah, but it's... Oh, shit. That wasn't actually my first, so it, first go-to. So, it is short for uncle, but it's a specific type. Like the it old... It also can be used to... Ref- so, it's like short for uncle, but it also can be used to refer to a specific kind of type of person. Like, I'm thinking like broken back, like, oh, oh like I'm in, <laughs> I'm in pain. No, it's it's more of a cool thing. Would you like... Do you want to just tell Yeah, me? go for okay, it. So, it's short for uncle, but it's also used to refer to like... Cool millennial people, so like they're the cool uncle, is their uncle? Oh, so we're actually or like slightly older people in general. So we're kind of unk. Yeah. Unks ourselves. Well, you'd hope you're an unk. Oh, you want to be an unk. You want to be an unk because it's like you know how like we cool. used to say it's like oh she's like the cool auntie. It's the cool uncle you have. It's the cool aunt. Yeah, yeah. Unk. gotcha. Unk is like the cool auntie or uncle. That's unk. Yeah. Yo, that's unk. Yeah. So like, if we went to Taj, we wouldn't want to embarrass him. We'd want to be like the cool unk. Is that why we you'd call your brother unky, rather than uncle? Oh, maybe. No, maybe I don't think he knew about it. He's kind of unkster. He's definitely a millennial, so I don't he's, think he To the kids, known. he's definitely unkster. He so. is unk. Oh, yeah. To the, to the four-year-olds, yes. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's yeah, ultra yeah. unk. Yeah. Super unk. My brother's <laughs> um, uncle name or, like, name is Unky Dunky. Yeah. Which is a really cool- That's a wicked name to have. The second anyone that's was unk, pregnant, he was, like, he was like, hello, I will be Unky Dunky from now on. Yeah. 100%. Like, it was no <laughs> yeah. hesitation. Uh, it's always, like- when people say oh, hunky dory, whereas like, I very, just kept like, jo- joyful. I just kept auntie. Yeah, auntie Ash. You're like auntie. Yeah, yeah. You were auntie cool. J for a while. I was auntie J apparently. Kaylee you know, didn't. Just... <laughs> Kaylee didn't really know. Which, <laughs> but I was cool with it. Which that auntie was the girl, and then uncle yeah. was the boy. So you were auntie. But it was J. kind of funny that it stuck for a while. It was a solid year. It was funny. It was a solid funny. year of auntie J yeah. and Uncle Sam. Yeah. So yeah, instead of right. Auntie Sam, it was Uncle Sam. Like trade places. <laughs> yeah. I think she always, she actually goes to say it still now. Probably. A- like accidentally. Probably, she won't think about it. Probably just, uh, yeah. Yeah. Her own little thing. But yeah. Um, but yeah, that's, that's funny. And the last one. Last one? A zaddy. 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 Or a zaddy. 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 Like, oh, she found a zaddy as soon as she graduated. A zaddy. I think I can work out what this one is. <laughs> and it horrifies me to death. <laughs> is a zaddy a Gen Z daddy? No. Oh. Good. Would you like to know what it is? Because that's horrifying. <laughs> yeah, what is it? What is it? It's a handsome, fashionable older man. Oh. So, like, an, like if you're, like, what? 20 and you want to date a 40-year-old, he'd be a zaddy. Like, some that's people, zaddy. Some people look at Paul Rudd and go, oh, my God, he's a zaddy. Because he's old. Because he's old, but he's still like handsome, fashionable. So Adam but he's Sandler an old is man. kind of a zaddy because he's like in the Adam basketball Sandler shorts. Adam Sandler is a whole n- different. He is an Adam Sandler. He's an unk zaddy. He is an. He is just an. Adam he's Sandler. a Mugen unk zaddy. I think he's his own genre. That's what we're saying. Mugen no, but I think they've literally made an, their own genre for like Adam Sandler. It's like Adam Sandler core. He's yes. literally a whole like subgenre just for Adam Sandler. Adam Sandler core. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But yeah. Zaddy. Zaddy. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Wow. Well, there but you that's go. That's my list. There was more. Yeah. Anyway, if you're a zaddy, <laughs> let us know in the comments. <laughs> so, if you really liked that and you think we should do more, just let me know because I have more. Oh, like, you have more. I yeah, well. I picked out the ones that I thought were funny on the list. But I'm was thinking we should lot. now call the the podcast Moog, Un- Moog and Unk Zaddy or something. Yeah. Oh, what's today's episode going to be called? Yeah, we've been That's coming boring. up with some stupid names. Jay has been coming up with some stupid, yeah. stupid Sorry, names. Sorry, I've been coming up with some stupid names. But yes, uh, that was it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. we'll see you next episode. Um, we're going to go have some dinner. Yeah, we need to go have some dinner. Awesome. Ooh. All right. Bye. Bye. Bye, Felicia.